Hi everyone, good Friday morning and welcome to Go Local Live. I'm Go Local News Editor Kate Nagel. Thanks for tuning in to kick off your almost start to the weekend here. I'd like to welcome in my guest, Rick Labresh, a five-time Rhode Island Special Olympics Super Plunger, about to be a six-time for the Super Plunge taking place March 21st and 22nd. Rick, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Well, I appreciate your coming in, raising awareness for this important event. For folks who don't know, the Super Plunge is the plunge to end all plunges. 24 hours, every hour on the hour, the plungers who are raising money and more importantly, awareness for Special Olympics, go in the water at Salty Brine Beach on the hour, 24 hours. Do you think people have any idea the, <laughs> what this entails? No, um, until you actually go out and do it, it sounds like it's all roses, like you're jumping in the water in July and you're not. The water temperature is 34 degrees. No matter if it's 50 degrees ambient temperature outside or it's 27 degrees below zero with the wind chill, 34 degree water is cold. And that is a major commitment, again, raising awareness for Special Olympics, so many great programs throughout the year, and bringing the unified school sports program into it as well. So while you have super plungers going around the clock, the unified schools have plungers who are raising money for Special Olympics and their schools as well. Correct, the unified champion schools plunge will take place March 21st at noon at Roger Wheeler Beach. These students and faculty, they, they raise money to raise awareness for Special Olympics Rhode Island because Unified Sports and Special Olympics are a partnership. It's, it's a wonderful, wonderful partnership. They jump in, they do their plunge, half the money they raise goes to Special Olympics Rhode Island, the other half goes to benefit their school. As of right now, I believe there's 500 athletes and faculty that are registered to plunge. There's 78 unified schools throughout the state of Rhode Island that are on the registration for this year. It's, 500 it's a, plungers for that one on the, again, Roger Wheeler, the Wheeler yeah. Beach. But we have to point out, there's a special facet to this. Denny DeJesus with Special Olympics of Rhode Island has never plunged before, has a challenge this year that if the unified schools are able to raise $75,000, correct he'll go in the water. That is the challenge. And right now these, these amazing athletes and students are approximately around $40,000, $44,000 the last I checked. So we need to get that number up and we need to get Denny in the water. Okay, a lot of folks know Denny around the state, <laughs> so we will push this wide and far to let folks know. And you're gonna be doing a little pre-plunge up in Maine with a couple of the plungers beforehand. Tell us about that. Yeah, we, there's about three, four, five of us. We go up to Maine to help raise awareness and funds for Special Olympics Maine athletes. Um, we're going to go up to Winthrop, Maine. We're going to jump in a hole in the ice is basically what it is. And it's, again, it's all about awareness, not just Special Olympics Rhode Island, Special Olympics Maine, New Hampshire. It's a family. It's a big family affair. And so, again, this event, raising awareness for the programs that happen throughout the year, but again, that annual event of the Special Olympics at URI is really the one that the athlete supporters look forward to every year. As you said, Special Olympics parent, uncle, you know just what an event that this is for the athletes who participate. The state summer games you're speaking of, oh, the, it's, it's amazing. It's when you take every athlete in Rhode Island, put them all together. It's, it's a celebration of their competition, their camaraderie, their friendship. There's nothing like it. If you've never been to a state summer game, I, I highly suggest come spend the day with these athletes. You will not be disappointed. Now, I know I asked you before, when you hear of other plunges of people only going in once, do you feel extra tough? But you said anybody who plunges really deserves recognition. Oh, absolutely. Anybody who's going to come out of their comfort zone, come out of their comfort of their, their home, their car, whatever they're sitting in, and jump into water that's 34, 33 degrees, I respect you 100%. You want to bring it up a notch, come join our team. <laughs> <laughs> and you said there's three rookies this year that haven't done it before. Correct. And, and they might have a little sense of what they're getting into. They do. Um, all three of them have plunged in previous events throughout New England. One is a uh, police officer down in uh, Hopkinton, Rhode Island, originally from Vermont, so he participated there. One gentleman is a teacher in um, East Greenwich, involved with unified sports. He's plunged before. So they have an idea what they're getting into for the one. It's the 24. It's the it's the midnight, one, two, three, four o'clock in the hour, morning. That's 
the most challenging part. Again, it's dead of night, you're up 24 hours. Yeah. The support structure must be so instrumental for you plungers there. Again, the heated uh, you know, place to sit in between. Correct. And again, it, it takes a village. Oh, we're very fortunate. We in Carter Farms out of Connecticut offers us these great sheds that we use. Newport Propane, they heat us. We couldn't do it without them. Um, we're very, it's support staff, parents, relatives, families, friends. Without them, we couldn't put this event on. And as you said, raising awareness for Special Olympics, but again, raising funds as well. I mean, the commitment, 24 hours, and every hour into the ice cold ocean. If that's not a, a way to go to someone and say, can you help me go financial support for Special Olympics? I mean, the endeavor that you're undertaking. Once, once, once we go and solicit monies and funds, once we mention Special Olympics, it's a soft spot in everybody's heart. People are very generous. We are very, very fortunate. Team-wise, we set a goal of $135,000. The last I checked, we were right around $65,000. We'll reach our goal, there's no doubt in my mind. We've got two to three and a half weeks left, and the, the donations come in. Um, we're very, very fortunate to have great sponsorships, families and friends. Again, just want to give that shout out that Denny to Jesus <laughs> will go in the water if the Unified Schools can raise $75,000. We'd definitely be putting this up for folks if they're gonna watch after the fact. So when the plunging's all said and done, do you just curl up in bed for about a, a, a full day to recover? <laughs> Most of us, it does take, believe it or not, it does take about a day to, to, to bounce back. Um, unfortunately, some people go right back into work on Monday morning, me, I'm fortunate enough where I'm retired where I can take that full day to recuperate, but it's, um, it's grueling, it's tedious, you're sleep deprived, it's, it, it's miserable at, in the middle of the night. It, there's no other word to put it, it's miserable. But there's nothing, again, as you said, it's family. I mean, to go through this bonding experience with the other super plungers, but again, for the greater family of Special Olympics Rhode Island, the unified schools, the athletes, the families, the supporters, the public. I mean, this is an event that everyone really rallies behind. It, it, it is, as I said before, the support that we get now from families and friends, but businesses, they just reach out. Can, what can we donate? Can we, you need food, do you need this, do you need that? It's incredible the response that people give to Special Olympics. Absolutely. And if you're watching right now, we'll be sure to put up links again about the event, how you can give, again, the Unified Schools, the athletes themselves, and learn more about Special Olympics here in Rhode Island as well. So Rick, again, congratulations on Thank five you. under your belt, coming up on the six, six yeah. showing the new ones the way forward. And of course, your even preview plunge getting ready and helping the greater New England Special Olympics family as well. So thanks for tuning in with us here on Friday morning. We'll be back, of course, at noontime. Ray Rickman, founder of Stages of Freedom, former state representative, will be here to give his big view. Go local columnist Robert Whitcomb will talk about the latest news and we'll have another guest here, a big library fight against big publishing. We'll be here back in studio again at the noon hour. I'm Go Local News Editor Kate Nagel.